This is the longest recorded goal in Australian rules football. 2016, Rupert Wills, Collingwood, VFL. This ball travels about 100 metres, tumbling end over end until rolling gleefully over the line to mark a moment in history. Wills must have thought no one would forget his kick and his name and his place in history. Except, of course, they would forget, much like they did when the exact same thing happened three years before. This is the story of the forgotten record breaker, the longest goal in AFL history. Viewers with any sort of football knowledge will recognise this. It's Malcolm Blight's massive, famous, match-winning torpedo punt in 1976. Many people think that this is the longest goal in VFL-AFL history. Not only is that not the case, and not only did this goal never actually hold such a record, it's not even the longest goal by a North Melbourne player. But we'll get to that. In 1976, the record looked practically unbeatable. It had been held by a familiar name for Gazman viewers, Big Dave McNamara, with his 84-yard bomb in 1923. Even notwithstanding whether this measurement was to the goal mouth or the ball's first bounce, it just eclipses Blight's measured kick. Then, in 1981, as St Kilda fans would know, Jeff Fairing broke the record like a Byron Pickett bump raising the bar by almost 10 metres. Only Billy Barrett would ever come close in the SANFL, either equaling it or breaking it by a metre, depending on what you read. What is it with St Kilda players and kicking long goals? Anyway, that brings us here. Round 20, 2013. North Melbourne are down in a tight game against an Adelaide side that somehow exceeded the bland ruse mediocrity that year. Daniel Wells receives the ball on the halfback flank, right on the back of the centre square. He goes for a run and spies up Lindsay Thomas one-on-one -on -one with a young Luke Brown. He lofts it up and to Thomas's advantage. Wells was never known as being a long driving kick. He'd driven one home from 55 earlier, but his best work was done from close range. This kick travels a respectable 50 or 60 metres, but bounces out of the reach of the more experienced Thomas and toward the wide open goal mouth. It's rained a fair bit this week, meaning the ball gains an extra few metres as it skids off the damp surface, buying Thomas valuable portions of seconds. Brown edges ahead as the ball bounces again, about 15 metres out from goal. Thomas knows he's lost the race. He starts using his body and gets in front of Brown thanks to what is, and let's be honest here, a dubious hold at best. The ball bounces a third time on the painted line of the goal square six metres out. It's up to the whims of the footy gods now. Do they admit Daniel Wells, a small forward best known for scoring from three metres out as the new patron saint of the longest goal church? And what of those saints? This honour that they've held for 90 years is, after their self-imposed implosion of 2011, all they really have. But, of course, this being St Kilda, about 70% of all footy fans don't even know the record is theirs. They think it belongs to this man, and in the postmodern world, objectivity is only a small portion of the truth. With this bounce, the footy gods decided what colours they wanted nailed to the altar of the big roost. Blue and white. Daniel Wells's kick was launched from nearly an identical point, markings-wise, as fairings, but crucially, Footy Park is three metres longer. By my best estimate, Wells's kick travelled about 89 metres, three metres further than the twin record holders. And no one cared. Not Chris or Brad Scott, circle correct answer, who had more interest in his chewing gum. 
not Daniel Wells' teammates, who, along with the assistant coaches, failed to give any high fives, ass slaps, or any kind of plaudits for the longest goal ever seen to that point. Not Dennis Cometti, who, rarely, didn't seem to grasp the real magic of this historic moment. Wait for the call, I think people may have forgotten. It's a goal! And not Daniel Wells himself, who matter-of-factly jogs to the interchange bench and just sits down. From the seconds after this record was broken, for all the effort put into it, it was doomed to be forgotten about. Hell, I was there. I was at that game and completely forgot it while compiling my list of 70 meter bombs for the St Kilda series. No one remembered it, bar one unknown golden soul in a long dead forum thread. A decade after it happened, this is all that's left. Until today. This video is devoted to setting the truth straight. These are your two paragons of the long bomb, two midfielders, one of whom scored one senior goal, the other having scored, what, maybe four goals from outside 50 ever? Their careers are poles apart, but their deeds are one and the same. Forgotten clearances in hope that, despite the odds, went the distance. Together, they are forgotten champions.